Hi everybody, I am Lady Stars and Fire and this is the weekly healing messages for August 8th until the 15th. Now, um, I always go into a little bit of astrology and I also give the runes that were given to me from Spirit and I give a little bit of spiritual information that was also given to me just in general each week. This is why I call it the healing messages. I specifically ask for guidance to help us move forward in the most positive healing ways within our life period and I ask that it's given for any and all who check in with the messages now um, I'm being told first off this week from spirit it's all about your words it's all about communication um, how is it that you're using those words uh, it is transformation through words, knowing of knowledge, knowing of your education, of inspiration, and how it is that you're using it to communicate. Um, so ultimately, it's using your words wisely also. Um, it's all about how we're going to grow right at this moment. Um, and And learning how not just through communication but we're gonna find out that this week's gonna have a lot to do with what you put in is what you get back basically are are you nurturing what you are growing in your life um, because depending on how much energy you're putting into it and how you're doing it properly will depend on just how well it's coming back to you so it's sending out to the world as well as bringing it back. It's karma in a sense too. So you want to look at these areas with how you're communicating. Make sure that you're using it wisely and, and stuff along that way. But also allow that inspirational energy to come in and help you through. Um, we're looking at the long haul this week. This week's not going to be just about just this week is what I'm getting. It's going to be something you might look back at a little later and be like, ah, that, that stuff kind of happened at this point. Um, you're going to be being told or reminded um, over and over again, or it, it's something that you might need to know this week, that, that gratitude works with abundance. Now, we all know that, but we tend to sometimes forget it, let's be honest. We know that when we're, great, when we're showing gratitude for all that it is that we have, that it helps us to receive more. But sometimes we get caught in all of that other energy and we kind of forget. And this is one of those weeks, don't forget. You want to make sure that you're showing your gratitude for everything that is in your life as well as that it, what it is that you are bringing to it. Because that is linked in. Your gratitude and your abundance come hand in hand. And you've got to remember that. Um, it's This week's going to be somewhat of that connection with that limitless flow of life. And depending on what it is you're manifesting. What it is that you're bringing to you. So that limitless flow of life. And they are saying to remember to stay full of hope. Full of success. Um, in a sense we're redefining success what is success because to some people success is only about where you stand what it is that is considered your your uh level of like like performance so to speak have you achieved and moved up did you get a promotion some people that is what their success is it's all about their goaling and their money but we're being reminded right now to look at a deeper root to look at it from the level of that openless flow with with um knowledge is power basically um that you can still come from your deeper inner riches and find your success family may be your success um they're saying you can get what you want with that knowledge is power but remember that it came from in here it came from the, the riches that are within you first not just the successful level um and what was branched outwardly so it's remembering to start inwardly not just look at success as money 
or something along that line. Look at it at the longer haul. Look at it at how you got it. Your inner riches that helped you get there. That's what's going to be being important. Um, then I'm also being given a lot of uh, Himalayan sea salt. Um, and for me, that usually means like a cleansing. Cleansing of yourself. Cleansing of your soul. Maybe cleansing of your body. Um, but it's like a gentle cleansing. It's like a protective gentle cleansing. I'm also being given a lot of rose quartz. Which would be all about bringing that love out. That unconditional love out. And um, citron. Citron is, I believe if I'm correct, citron the stone is, um, it destroys negativity. It just destroys it period. And it's the success stone as well. So I'm being given that combination. So that's somewhat of the feel that we're going for. It's a, it's a successful week, a successful pulling week, but a calming and tender from love is what I'm getting. Um, now to start off the week, I'm actually going to go to the end of the week, um, because Saturn goes direct, but Saturn will be going direct on the 13th, which is Saturday. Now, We've been in retrograde for a while, Saturn has. And let me help explain to you what some of that may mean. Because Saturn, when it's direct in general, usually is about your boundaries and your rules. It's, you know, what is, where's your boundaries and what are your rules in this situation outwardly? Um, it is withholding versus resistance. It's sometimes when we find ourselves in our Saturn, we don't act. It's where we find ourselves, uh, if I don't know exactly what to do, then I'm not going to do anything. And that's those whole boundaries and resistance thing. This is your Saturn inside of you. It is your patience, your endurance, your responsibilities, your organization, your structure, your guidelines, and how we learn of these things. How we are able to handle and work with you know, our patience, our endurance, our guidelines, our organization, our structure, all of that because that is boundaries for us. This is where we learn all of this energy. But with Saturn going direct, right before it goes direct, it may be taking that last inward glance really hard at you inwardly. Because anytime we're in retrograde, it's like instead of the projected outward energy, it's like it turns and it kind of egotize, it becomes ego and looks at you and makes you view things. So it's been showing us where our patience really isn't there. It's been showing us where we're not coming through with our endurance. It's been showing us where we're not fully being responsible. We're not holding up our responsibilities where we're not organized, where we don't have structure, where we're not following guidelines, basically, that are important within our life. Um, we're not digesting things, maybe, properly. Um, that could go for food, because it could be for your diet. But it could also be, I tell people all the time, your digestion process is not just what you eat. It is what you consume in your life, period. So what are you consuming? And are you giving it the proper time to digest and work through that? That's patience, honey. It's that simple. Um, so when we're going direct, this is all the stuff that we look at outwardly. Sorry, you just had to like bug it, bite me or something. Um, we're looking at all of that outwardly. But since we're about to go direct, we're still in retrograde. We might be taking that last little hard look. And you might be noticing these areas. And that also means we're about to enter the shadow of it as well. So we might be getting a little bit of smack of, of reminding of those areas. But that's a good thing because it's to help us move forward. Now, the week starts off in Libra. Libra is all about balance and harmony. It's all about equal. How are we equal? How do we make things equal? That would be the balance. That would be finding harmony. It is all about our charming personality, our social communication again so how do we stay equal how do we make things neutral how are we you know finding harmony within our relationships that is Libra then we move into Scorpio throughout the middle of the week and Scorpio is the art of strategy 
Really, that's what Scorpio comes down to. Scorpio, oh, Scorpio is great at analyzing and determining situations. It's great at let me be the detective and find out exactly what it is I need. And it's emotional. Oh my, Scorpio can be highly emotional. It's a water sign and it, it just like goes into overdrive. So you want to watch for being crisis oriented. Don't create crises and blow them out of proportion. Um, it's very high emotional. When we're in Scorpio, we feel everything. We feel the love. We feel the joy. We feel... All the greatness of harmony and everything that is good, but we also feel the betrayal. We feel when we've been let down, when we've been taken advantage of. This all comes out strongly when we are in Scorpio for the good or the bad. And this is why I said you want to watch out for being crisis oriented at this time. Now we go into the follow into the end of the week, which is the weekend basically with Sagittarius. And it's enthusiastic. It is yearning for more. It is, I'm never completely, 100% totally satisfied. I'm always looking for a little bit more. Um, it's freedom oriented. It can be excessive, but it is also generous and it is optimistic when we are in Sagittarius. So that gives you a little bit of the week in general of how you're going to be feeling as we go through the different signs but reminding you also that like i said saturn is going direct on the 13th so you're taking a little bit of those last minute views at your patience your endurance your responsibilities your organization your structure and your guidelines you're going to be looking at them inwardly at yourself and then it'll start to go back out into what you're looking out at the world and you'll also be heading at that into shadow at the end of the week so there's a warning for you there now um, mm, we're starting off the week for the runes in Manaz. And this one is coming in, um, Truth and Honesty. And then we also received it also in Rada Night, which is Unconditional Love, Love of Self, Love of Others. And it is also calming and energies. Like I said, it's I'm feeling it's got a lot of love wrapped around it this week. But you're still going to be kind of critical, it's kind of viewing things, kind of really let me sure, let me be sure, kind of thing. Um, Manaz is man, humanity, people. It is the air. It is the world of people. And like I said, you're going to be kind of analyzing people outwardly. Along with what it's good for you in here. Um, it is. It focuses on your awareness. It focuses on awareness of self and one's place in the scheme of things. I'm being told right now it has to do with intelligence, creativity, creative skills, and your abilities as well. Um, shows the presence of someone seeking or finding their true path. Or it may show where someone feels that they're victimized or lost because they're not finding their way through this on that deeper self. Um, indicates the higher level of spiritual and magical achievement. It is self-realization. It is a consciousness of that self-realization and starting to be able to find yourself the hero within. It is the seeking or the questing or personal quest within awakening and finding one's place within the world these are your interpretations i'm being told to remind you these are interpretations so that you can help see where this fits into your life um it is your belonging energy the divining energy manifesting from human acceptance into twin nature both of human and of divine it is It is finding your true perception and your social role. Realization that comes from only playing one's part within this world. Um, useful endeavors of focusing within your everyday, day-to-day -day life. It is fulfilled social existence, high achievements as well 
as simple ordinary endeavors again like within your day-to-day -day, every life starting to really notice that and fulfill that social existence um It says, focus on ordinary creates extraordinary achievements. So, it's, it's finding how you and your small life are big, honey. And don't forget that because we all have our own individual lives. So we're all little in our own lives. But none of us are little. We all are big. We all have a big reason for being here. A big point. But we're only going to be part of finding that bigness that muchiness that is us if we're playing our part within our life properly now the next thing is kenez kenez is coming in truth and honesty um kenez is true is sorry is torch craft cunning manifesting it is your character it is your personality it points to matters of creativity and of craft shows our ability through our natural efforts also we have problems with our creativity when we are out of balance so you're being reminded also to take care of yourself to pamper yourself because you can't have good creativity if you are not taking care of yourself if you need that pampering you need that rest time Lord knows they just gave me that smackdown because everybody heard about my tooth and how I was having problems and I had to have it pulled and it made me sick. And for all of those of you who sent me love and prayers, I thank you. But that's part of it. If you overdo it, you can burn yourself out. So you have to watch your balance. Your balance is important in all things in life. And your balance is your four. It is your emotional, your mental, your physical, and your spiritual. Period. No matter how it is that you're looking at it, your four has to be balanced or you get out of whack. Anyway, back to Kinez. Kinez is principle of ignition. It is your start button. It is that go. It is turning it on. Um, creativity expressed in form. It controls us through our inspiration, our knowledge, and our capabilities. It is the shaping and reshaping of the present. Transmutation through fire and heat. So it can also deal with sexual energy. Um, and it can also deal with our children. Because fire is us. What do we love? That's where our love comes out. So fire is going to obviously always deal with our children. As well as it deals with our, our what we love sexually as well. So it could be one or the other. Um, like I said, it may be dealing with transmutation through fire and heat. In this expressive... Um, Form in this creative form and manifesting and and just cre creative in general for what it is we are creating within our in our life and then I am being sent to lastly but definitely not least is Jebo oh wrong one Jebo is coming in awareness Jebo is coming in awareness and is also in spiritual energy Jebo is the gift. And it is the gifting price. It is exchange. It is fire. It focuses on hospitality and generosity. Things given and things received. Some. It is also of someone who is somehow feeling kept hostage uh, to a situation because maybe they're not like I said if you're feeling like the hostage is in a situation there's something you're not finding that they're trying to tell you about I'm sorry something popped up on my screen um, and otherwise so, so you know that you're, you're missing something. If you're feeling that, like the hostage in the situation, you're not getting something that you're supposed to be learning. Because otherwise, it should be revealing your gifts, your, your special gifts from in, within. It is also of, of sexual magic. It is fire. It is generosity. It is like marriaging. It is the gifting, the gifting price. But asking, it, it is receiving for something unasked for. It is a gift and its obligations. It is sacrifice, agreements, honoring of those contracts, receiving graciously. It is also reminding us, plain and simple, honey, 
the fact that we're living and we're breathing, that itself is a gift. So never forget it. I wish you so much well, and I hope that you have a wonderful week. And take good care of you. Don't forget to pamper yourself because we all need a break. Even though we're trying to make such a wonderful life for ourselves. Hugs and kisses and I'll see you next week. Bye.